Hello again, everyone. It is Mrs. Smith here, ready for another RE community session. Now, this is session nine. Uh, we've got one more after this one. So, but if you haven't watched or taken part in sessions one to eight, then please do go back and do those ones first before doing this one today. Now, I wonder if you can remember what we've looked at yes, the, yesterday, the last session. I keep calling it yesterday. In the last session, in session eight, we looked at humanists and that code of living that um, people have inbuilt into them and to, to know what way to act and to be. And I uh, wonder what you wrote on your, on your little people um, person on your paper chain. I wrote about honesty, be honest, um, doing the best for humanity, so making sure we're not hurting anyone. And I've got here thinking first, so actually weighing it up. So doing a lot more thinking. And uh, we're gonna be using some of these um, rules for living in our uh, learning today. Um, so I'm gonna share with you now what you will need. So do go off and get those things. And uh, we're gonna actually apply lots of things that we've used over the last few sessions into one little bit of a mini project today. So what you will need today is uh, three pieces of paper, at least one pen or pencil, get those out. Colours, if you'd like, you'd, I think you'd really like those. And again, hold on to your people, people chain that we've made. Now, first things first, I want you to, to have a think about photographers. Now, photographers have got an amazing insight. They get to go around and they get to see lots of amazing images that they want to capture. And I want to give you an opportunity now to ask a photographer a question. Now, it's not myself, I'm not the photographer, but there is a photographer who's taken a picture. It's a picture of a very special and unique Islamic practice called Hajj. Now, Hajj is a pilgrimage that many Muslims aim to make in their lifetime. And it's going to a place called Mecca, and then once they get to Mecca, it's walking around and around this, um, basically their the, the Mecca place. And it's uh, honoring and uh, praising Allah uh, for giving them the privilege of making that commitment and pilgrimage to that place. And we're gonna have a take a look at this photograph. Now this uh, photograph was taken at Hajj where this big event that everyone goes to, or many people try to go to in, once in their lifetime, this photograph was taken in 2019. So have a look. Can you see how many hundreds and thousands of people are gathered to all worship at Mecca? It's a pretty impressive sight. Now, this year, 2020, looked a lot different. And I'll show you that in a minute. But before we do that, I wonder if you had the photographer sat in front of you now, what questions would you ask them? On your first bit of paper today, I want you to have a go at writing three questions that you'd want to ask the photographer about this picture. Pause the video here and give it a go. It is an amazing sight, isn't it? And I have always wondered about where all those people manage to sleep <laughs> and how they have water and food um, for their journey. Now, to me, that shows a real dedication and a real respect for their beliefs and something that can motivate a community to come together. I think you've probably come up with some excellent questions that you'd want to find out too. I said I'd share with you what 2020 looked like for Hajj. Now, due to the coronavirus restrictions, many, many, many people could not travel. And interestingly enough, this is what Hajj looked like in 2020. People still made the commitment to go, but hardly anyone compared to how many uh, usually who take Hajj. It's a pretty amazing sight, the difference from one year and the difference a pandemic can make. Now, today, we are going to be focusing on 
uh, how many religious groups can come together and live together in one world, in one place, in one town. Now I'm going to show you on the screen again some boxes. Now in these boxes I've got the story of your town. It's called Your Town and I have to thank Ari today for their resource that uh, we are using today. They've given me permission to share this with you which I'm really pleased about. You can see each of these boxes have been given a letter and you only need to write the letter but on your piece of paper I wonder if you can try and put these parts of the story of your town in the correct order. I'm going to read them out and then give you some time to put them in an order that you think is right. So A says on Tuesday the teachers at your town primary school noticed all the children talking about the terrible television pictures. B. Hannah and David were excited to be taking their baby Ruth to synagogue for Shabbat. C. It was an ordinary week in your town, but in another part of the world, it was not so ordinary. On Wednesday night, the TV news showed pictures of a dreadful famine. D says, every morning at the Hindu Mandir, remember the Hindu Mandir is their place of worship for Hindus, there was a short service called the Puja. Mrs. Baguette liked to take her children. And E, Mr. and Mrs. Hassan and Amir and Asma go to the mosque on Fridays. Sophie and her mum and dad went to church. They were still talking about the famine pictures. So something's going on here. I'm getting some links about a famine. And then on G, it says there were films on the TV news and there were pictures of starving children from Africa. So pause the video here and have a go at trying to put these parts of the story in the correct order. Fantastic. Right, I'm gonna show you the story again with the boxes in the correct order. Let's see how well you did. Give yourself a tick for each one. Now I have to say that these um, ones E, B, F and D, if you've got them in a slightly different order, then it doesn't matter, okay? But we've got one, it was an ordinary week in your town. Then followed by G, which was there are films on the TV news, pictures of starving children in Africa. Then you've got Mr. and Mrs. Hassan going to the mosque. Then you've got Hannah and David going to the synagogue. Then you've got Sophie and her mum and dad going to church. And then the Hindu Mandir. And then on Tuesday, the teachers at your time primary notice all the children talking about the terrible television pictures. So we've got a bit of a scene going on here. I'm going to read the story from start to finish. But I would like you to have a look at the picture of your town as we go. I'm just going to try and position my camera so that we can see everything that's going on. Okay, I'm down at the bottom now, everyone. So let me read it out. And as I read it out, I want you to look at the picture of your town. And I wonder if you can spot anyone from the story, okay? And how many people can you spot? Hopefully I'm not covering too many. Here we go. So it was an ordinary week in your town, but in another part of the world, it was not ordinary. On Wednesday night, the TV news showed pictures of a dreadful famine. There were films on the TV news. There were pictures of starving children in Africa. Mr. and Mrs. Hassan and Amir and Azmir go to the mosque on Fridays. Now, can you spot the mosque, everyone? If you look carefully, we've got a family that are down here, and this is the mosque building. And remember we talked about symbols of, uh, of faith or community are really important. Well, one symbol I haven't really shared with you yet is this symbol for the Islamic faith. That's something that you can spot. There we go, we've got a mosque there. You've got, um, Hannah and David were excited to be taking their baby Ruth to synagogue for Shabbat. I wonder, can you find a picture of a synagogue? Now, if we think right back to session one, I showed you a picture of Rebecca. Now, Rebecca wore a lovely chain around her neck, which had a six-pointed um, star on. And I wonder, can you find that six-pointed star in the picture? Can you see it? It's up here on the top. This is the synagogue building, the place of worship for Jewish people. And here we've got the little family with the baby 
taking her to synagogue for Shabbat, a special time, a special time every week for Jewish families. They then got Sophie and her mum and dad went to church. They were still talking about the famine pictures. Now, hopefully I'm not covering up too much of Sophie and his family and her family, but if we look, we've got a cross here. And if you remember, that was a Christian symbol on top of a church here. And we've got the, a vicar greeting the family as they arrive. And then every morning at the Hindu Mandir, there was a short service called a puja. Mrs. Bakker liked to take her children. So if we look here, this is the last building. This is the Mandir, and this is the symbol for Hinduism. And we've got that family there. And on Tuesday, the teachers at your time primary school, I hope you've noticed the school right at the back there, were all talking about the television, television pictures. So here we go. That's the story of your town. We've got four different places of worship there, all trying to live together in this one place. I think that's pretty impressive. So again, a thank you to Ari today for giving us permission to use this resource. It's very kind of you. I'm now going to sh share with you some quotes. Let's stop the share here. Here are some quotes from different religious texts. And I, and this gives religious groups some real good reason as to why they feel hurt and want to talk about the pictures that they've seen on TV of this dreadful famine going on in Africa. That doesn't sound great at all. And the children are wanting to talk about what they've seen. Now, do you recognize from any of the religions we've explored or the values that we have already talked about in these sessions from here? So let's read them. So we've got love is patient, love is kind, love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always persevere, love never fails. Now that's taken from the Bible. And that's a quote talking about love. And if you think right back to that first se uh, third session when we talked about Christian communities, that's brilliant. Here's a Hindu quote from Mahatma Gandhi. Be the change you want to see in the world. Now I wonder, some of those children at your town primary were really wanting to change something, wanted to do something about it. Here's a Muslim quote. Have compassion on those who live on earth and he who is in heaven will have compassion on you. That's a quote from Prophet Muhammad, who um, uh, Muslim people uh, read about in, uh, in the Quran, their sacred text. And then another one we've got here, a Jewish quote. It has been told you, uh, sorry, it has been told you humanity what is good. What does the Lord require of you? To do what is just, that means to do what is right, to love mercy and to walk with your God. So that's a Jewish quote as well. I wonder if this is stirring up some of those feelings and emotions that are going on in some of the your town primary pupils. Now I want you to think, can you guess what happens next in the your town story? Let's have a look again at the pictures. I'm going to share the screen again of your town. Have a look really carefully again. Can you see anything else that is going on? I can spot a van, I can spot some newspapers, I can spot um, a desk or a table in the middle of the town centre. There's something there, there's almost like some action about to take place because of some of these things that the children who go to the different places of worship have a belief in, have a value of. So I want you to pause the video here and give yourself some thinking time about what would happen next. Fantastic, right, to give you a bit more help with thinking about what happens next. I'm going to give you some prompts. So let me move my video again, just so we can see everything. So I would love you to choose one of the sentence starters. You could focus in on maybe the, um, the family that go to the Mandir. So that's um, uh, Mrs. Beggar and uh, taking her children there. You might want to focus on the family that goes to the Shabbat uh, in the synagogue. 
You might want to talk about what Sophie does next time she goes to church. You might want to think about what Amir does again when he goes to the mosque and what the newspapers might write about, what maybe happens in Africa, what maybe happens the head, with the head teacher. We've got here another quote that says, when the lorry came to collect all the food that had been bought, dot, dot, dot. So I wonder if there's something that needs to happen. And the radio reporter wanted to interview people. So I want you to choose a couple of the prompts. And on, your, and on another piece of paper, I want you to write what you think happens next. You can be as detailed as you want. You could write it like a story if you want, or you can just write it as a couple of sentences. You write what happens next. Pause the video here to do your story writing. Fantastic story writing. Now, I've got a couple of um, examples here which children have written about what happens next in your town. Um, have a look and see how they compare to yours. So we've got a piece of writing here. Next time Sophie went to church, she heard the priest saying the prayer about love and kindness. And Sophie was helping starving people by donating their toys there that, then they, that they didn't play with anymore and get money and change for the starving children. They should donate food like a lot of dry food, which would stay fresh. The lorry was loaded with dry food like peas, beans and, cup, and a couple of other kinds of food that were sent to the children in Africa. Something really simple there. Sophie learned about showing love and kindness, that love is com uh, the Bible quote. Love is patient, love is kind. And I think that's really, really important. Let's see another person who came uh, up with an, another, what happened next. Far away in, in Africa, the Jewish people sent some food to um, Africa. And, all, and they all worked as a team to make the people in Africa happy to have the food because the Jewish faith teaches us to love one another. And if we look here, what has been told you, what has been the Lord require of you to do what is just and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So that's something that those children wrote about. I wonder how they compare to yours. I bet your story writing has been fantastic. And I hope that you've thought really carefully about some of these quotes and these wise bits of advice that we've already thought about over the last few sessions. Now, I wonder, let me just come up of here. I wonder, what does the story of your town actually tell us about living in community? That was a disaster happening over in Africa. We had lots of community groups there gathering together to actually do something about it. And there's a lovely picture in your town of all of them working together. And I wonder if all the different beliefs that they have, whether they can come together and support the greater need. In your town, it looks like it. What values do you think we can learn from this? Take a moment to just think about that. Pause the video if you'd like to. Now it's time to get out your paper chain from the last couple of sessions and I'm now on the back of mine. I've added my hair and what have you for, for my humanist one. And I'm going to write a few phrases that I've learned about this. And it is, um, for me, it is about taking action. When there is a need. And I wonder if that applies to you. I also want to write the word love again, because I think that has really come out clearly. And I wonder whether we can write the word change there. Be the change. You might have seen that quote from Mahatma Gandhi on other um, on posters and things like that. So that's what I've added to there. So taking action. when there is a need, change and love, using love. That's the second time I've used love. And that's actually quite nice in my little community. So pause your video here if you want to add to your people. Now, that was a great session. Thank you so much for taking part. Our next session is gonna be our last one. Bring your designer hats. 
because we are going to be doing some designing. We're going to be pulling together everything that we've considered about how we belong to a community, what communities we're involved in and how that plays out, all the different things we've learned from different religions and worldviews. It'd be great to have you with us. Thanks again, everyone. Bye.